Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to this webinar about uh, how to teach an exam class for B2 first for schools and C1 advanced. My name is Alberto Costa and I work for Cambridge Assessment English in the Assessment Services team. And with me today is my colleague, Sarah Ellis. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. Thank you very much. Yes, so I'm Sarah, and I work with the Assessment Services team based in Italy. And in fact, today, I'm talking to you from just outside Florence in Tuscany. And thank you to everyone who's telling us where you're watching us from. It's great to see uh, where you're joining us from. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, absolutely. I am speaking from Brazil. I'm based in Sao Paulo. So let's get started. Over to you, Alberto. Thank you, Sarah. So once again, everyone, thank you very much for joining us today. This is an overview of what we are going to talk about. We'll start talking about SMART goals very briefly because I mentioned SMART goals in my last session. Uh, we, we will also talk about the importance of knowing the exam well so we can better prepare students for the exam. We will also talk about exam classes for a B2 first four schools and C1 advanced. And we have some more, right, Sarah? Absolutely. Lots of ideas and activities we hope you'll be able to take away from the session. And as we, well as yep. As well as the resources we have here, Sarah and I have put together a number of resources that we are going to share with you so that you can get ready to start preparing learners for the exams, right? Okay, we're going to start talking about uh, preparation for an exam. When we look at uh, preparing for an exam, it seems like uh, we are going on a long journey. So in order for us and our learners to feel that this journey is uh, nicer, more pleasant, smoother, it's very important that we start uh, creating uh, and setting goals along the way so that uh, we can better prepare learners based on their needs, uh, based on uh, um, uh, the time that we have between now and the day of the exam. And as we set goals along the way, students will feel more confident when they come to the day of the exam. So it's very important that we help uh, them set smart goals and that we, uh, as teachers set goals as well for our learners. For example, for this session, uh, Sarah and I have a lot to cover. So we, we had to set some very smart goals, right, Sarah, in order Absolutely. to try and fit as much as possible and give you as many ideas as possible in these 60 minutes. So when we're talking about smart goals, we are talking about this acronym here, making goals, for example, relevant. So what are my students' learning needs? one of the first questions. And also it's about making goals specific. What do I want my students to achieve? And making goals time bound as well. What do I want my students to achieve this year, this term, uh, this class? Uh, we are at different moments of the academic year around the world. For example, I'm in the Southern Hemisphere. So we are just this week, just now starting our academic year, whereas our I'm colleagues. in the northern, I'm in the northern <laughs> so, so, uh, hemisphere and of course we're actually in the middle of the academic year so it's obviously we're looking at this from two different perspectives. Yes, yeah, so this is important to make the goals time bound as well because our students, since we are talking about uh, an, an international audience, will be uh, taking the exams at different dates. Right. Also, it's important to make the goals achievable. So is what we are going to propose to learners level appropriate? And what support do I need to give them? And making goals measurable and accessible. So how will I or how will my students know that they are making progress? So this is what we talk about. Uh, this is what we mean when we talk about uh, creating smart goals. Also, it's very important that we know the exam well, and Sarah will tell you a few things about this. Yes, absolutely. So even, whether you're new to Cambridge English qualifications or a very experienced teacher, I think for all of us, uh, the first place to go is the teacher's handbooks. So you'll see on the next slide here that you can download um, a, a B2 First for Schools handbook or a C1 Advanced handbook, whichever you need. And of course, this is a real, um, 
uh, treasure trove of information. It's very important. And you can see that each part of the test um, in, is included. And there is information about how it's tested, the types of uh, task that each part has, the way it's marked, the time of it. So all the kind of essential information that will help you in planning your, uh, your program, let's say. And of course, Unfortunately, today we haven't got time to go through each part, but you will be able to find information about all the parts which we don't manage to cover today. But we've, we've chosen a few parts from each um, part of the exam so that you get a flavor of, of uh, some ideas as well. And you can also see how it relates, um, each skill relates to each other as well. So please start with reading, Alberto. Yes, uh, well, when we're talking about reading for B2 first post schools in C1 advanced, we are talking about a paper that has actually uh, two components there. We have the reading component and we have the use of English component. When we look at the structure of the, this paper for the two exams, they have some similarities. So for example, some of the exam items are similar. Uh, so we have this task alignment between the two exams. And we also have the fact that uh, this paper weighs 40% of the total because 20% uh, is for reading and 20% is for use of English. And then we have the other percentages for the papers we are going to talk about very soon. We are, but we also have some differences like, for example, the length of the paper, one hour and 15 minutes for B2 first for schools and uh, one hour and 30 minutes for um, C1 advanced. We can also see some differences in terms of parts and number of questions as well. Yeah, so and of course, are... yes, and of course, in your results, you will actually get a score for your use of English part and your reading skills um, separately. So uh, we talked about teachers getting to know the exam. The other thing, of course, is helping our students really um, see where they're going and have a direction. So there are some great new free lesson plans which you can use with your uh, students um, to help them get know, to know the exam. So if you're at the beginning of a course, you might decide to, to get them to have a look at a sample paper. You've got some questions here to help them look at that paper and find out if the information is true or false. Of course, you've got the answer key here. If you're already doing the, if you're already in the middle of your course and you're getting towards the exam time, you might use this activity also just to re remind the students about what to expect in each part of the paper, how uh, and also looking at the questions and the task types, etc. So that's available to download, and we'll make sure that you have the links to these um, um, after the session. So if we just look briefly at a couple of sections from the use of English and the reading, just to remind you that the first four tasks in the reading and use of English paper are, if you like, focusing on vocabulary and grammar. And the second part focuses more on the reading skills. Of course, reading is involved in all parts of this paper, and it's important to get your students to think about understanding the text and not just about trying to fill in the gaps, for example, in this first part. Part one uh, tests mostly vocabulary. You can see that you have to select one suitable word, um, which from a group of semantically similar words, and uh, obviously it's a multiple choice uh, four option question here. So what we're testing here, of course, is the meaning and use of words. And of course, words uh, can mean different things in different contexts. So we're kind of exploring that meaning and how they're used. And students will need to practice recognizing uh, differences in meaning where they're very similar. So we've just got an example here. We've got the difference between cut and tear. Uh, so we've got the two very sem semantically similar, but obviously the meaning and use will be different. And of course, you've also got to watch out for things like tear. So the same spelling, but different pronunciation, uh, pronunciation and of course, different meaning. So getting students to really look at recognizing um, differences in meaning is important. Also for this part of the paper, we, we need to look at collocation um, and set phrases. And you can see here, of course, we're talking about the context of applying for a job. And of course, all these words would be suitable. But what we're trying to get students to look at is that collocation, looking at the way it's used um, in context. So here, of course, they're, they're looking at what's before the gap, 
and what's after the gap, which is very important. And of course, here, the preposition is going to help them choose the correct word. Now, it's understanding those text attack skills, if you like, um, are important equally at B2 and C1. And you can see at C1, like um, Alberta was saying, you've got task alignment. So the different states, um, exams levels have similar tasks. Obviously, the level of challenge increases, but the actual task alignment helps the fact that maybe they've done B2 first, they've had experience of this kind of task, and uh, as they go through their learning path, it will help. But as I said, obviously, the level of challenge changes. So if we look at this next activity, we can see this is, again, something you can download. Um, it's a lesson plan to use with students to help them um, understand how to determine which option is correct. Now we can see in the example here that the, the correct answers are circled and we're gonna get our students to think about what does the reader have to know about these words so that they can actually choose the correct answer. And this takes them through that process. So let's look at the example zero. So we've got the, the lexically similar words. They're all similar, but the use is different. Now, what does that mean? And we can see some examples to help students. So they look at the text and they can see four. So he swapped his black belt for um, ballet shoes. So obviously that's a key. Um, I know that varied, for example, isn't followed by preposition. Whereas we have uh, two other words which have prepositions. Let's have a look at those. So we have differed from and replaced with or by. So of course, these are the kind of clues that students need to start being uh, where looking at before the gap and after the gap. So of course, this takes us to the correct uh, structure swap for. But um, again, this lesson plan will help you do that with the students and there's some other examples as well. Now, part two of the, uh, of the reading paper is an, is an open close. So there are no options available. So the students need to think of the words, the suitable word to go in the gap. Now, again, we've got the task alignment between B2 first and C1 advanced. So similar activity, level of challenge, a little bit more difficult. Now, of course, here we're testing grammatical or if you like lexical grammatical uh, language. So looking at things like phrasal verbs, linkers, um, of words in fixed phrases. Um, so again, students really need to be looking at their knowledge of structure of the language, but also understanding the text and not just going for that gap, they've got to look at the text. So when we're working with students, perhaps at the beginning, it can be quite challenging. So we can pro pro provide a bit more scaffolding. So for example, here we have the answers, but they're mixed up and we ask the students to obviously read the text, choose from the, from the, from the words that are available. Then as they get more confident, of course, they're going to be um, working on choosing the words without your help. But I think this can be a step in between. Then, of course, we can have a look at the next slide there that um, I think one of the things that helps students enjoy exploring, uh, if you like, uh, Lexis in this sense and grammar together is creating their own closed tests. So taking a um, paragraph like this, for example, get them to create their own clothes. Um, and again, you can do that gradually, perhaps starting with something like removing the articles. Um, and here is a free app. There are many others, this is just one, which allows you to paste the text into the box, as you can see on the left, and then choose what you're going to use for making the clothes. So as I said, you could choose to do articles, or you may choose to do every fifth word, every sixth word, of course, um, and of course, others as well, including letting you choose which words you, you take out. And of course, students can create it for their peer and get them to be thinking about that. So here's the example with the articles removed using the same text. So the students are working with that text. Let's have a look at the prepositions. Now you might take out something else as well. So again, uh, using the same text, they kind of develop that confidence and explore language. Um, of course, we've got our stronger and weaker learners to think about uh, for weaker learners or perhaps learners who are new to this type of task, you might provide more support. So saying what kind of word is missing. So it's a preposition is missing, etc. Whereas the stronger uh, learners, you might ask them to, to use a text you've already done before, uh, take out 
out some words, for example, prepositions, create an open close. And again, they, they would then do that without the same support. So you can use the same text in different ways. So then we come to part three and part three is looking at word formation. So we have a text, but this time we have a stem word, as you can see um, on the left. Again, same task um, at the both levels, but the challenge changes. And of course, this is testing uh, knowledge of prefixes, suffixes, internal changes as you work with that stem word. Now, again, one of the, the challenges is that students often go for the gap without looking at the text. So here we have the stem word. Yes, they could look at the gap and try and make the word. But the problem is that they really do need to be looking at the whole text. So one of the things you can do, whether you're online or offline, of course, is cover it with a post-it. So there's my digital post-it. Cover it up, get them to read the text first, tell you about the text. But they might even start thinking about the potential words in the gap before they look at those stem words and then really think about the knowledge of structure that means that the word will fit into the space. So just for the first one, some say you need to be very mm, to play it well. So obviously we need to look at what kind of word. So here would be, you need to be very skillful to play it well, etc. So again, it's really using the text to help them choose the right form. And again, we've got some lesson plans that you can uh, refer to. And this one crosses over between B2 and C1 and is, uh, works on uh, word formation and on vocabulary development. So again, very clear instructions for the teacher. You can see that there are lesson stages and there are also online options. So if you are teaching um, online and you want to some support with that, then there are ideas for that too. This is the text that is used. You can see that we've got the STEM words, but we've also got some focus, uh, focus on vocabulary as well. So the vocabulary handout, which you can download, provides the words. The students obviously have to match the definition, which in itself is an important activity because we're looking at paraphrasing. And again, uh, that's in, going to be important for a variety of parts of the, of, the, of the exam. So yes, and that lesson plan you can download. Now, the other thing, of course, is doing little, little uh, um, tasks for students, give them a STEM word, ask them to choose a picture that, that, that you think um, illustrates that, that word, and then get them to design some questions which they can give to their peers. So I can ask you to write in the chat, you know, what have these people been involved in? What do you call a person who takes part in one of these things? And how do you describe a person who really wants to win and works hard to do so? Thank you, I can see you writing in the chat. That's great. And the last but not least, how do you describe someone who is not interested in winning or working hard to win? And of course, it's important to look at the negative um, uh, suffixes and, as well um, um, and prefixes. So uh, we've got the words there, so and very simple, but it's nice they create their own exercise and they're thinking about that word development. And of course, if you're doing it online, it's, they, it's possibly easier to share. And if you're not, then they could still do it um, as an interesting activity to develop word, word formation. Now, uh, in Alberta's last session, he um, talked about B1, A2 and B1, and he showed you the word lists that you can download. Now at B2 and C1, there are no word lists. So what can you use to help with vocabulary development? One of the fantastic tools is this one on the screen, English Vocabulary Profile Online. Again, it's a free tool and you can choose the, the CFR level you're interested in. So I've chosen C1 here's an example. I've actually chosen a topic and then the computer has given me the list of words that it has there at C1. And you can see that I can now click in to get more detail and I get more information. I think if you click again, then we can see how the word bitter uh, is developed. And you can see also the levels above and the levels below, but also you can see how the word bitter is taste as well as feelings. Um, and again, they get sample examples as well to help uh, exactly also to practice further. So it's a great tool and you can uh, use that for free too. 
Now, the second part of this paper, as we said, is focuses on reading skills. Now, because they're going to be seeing a variety of different text types, it's very important to encourage students to do as much reading as possible of different text types, not always the same kind. Now, we can just look briefly at a, a couple of examples, but thinking about the skills that they need to develop, of course, it's about the ability to, to use a variety of uh, reading skills, skimming and scanning, of course, essential, but also being able to manage the ambiguity, coping with unfamiliar words and understanding in particular attitude and opinion. And of course, the tone of the text, and as you get to see one, of course, that becomes increasingly important. Understanding text organization will help them with their reading. So again, um, these skills are important for us to develop. <coughs> Excuse me. So part five in both ex uh, exams uh, is a reading comprehension using multiple choice questions. Um, and of course, this is uh, focuses on a text where the students will be looking at quite detailed understanding as well as just reading, if you like. So they do need to do use both skills. And again, they'll be looking at organization, exemplification um, and reference. And of course, the challenges for uh, students are that they often don't read the whole text. So one of our uh, jobs is to help students appreciate why it's important to read the whole text before they actually look at the questions, because otherwise they fall into the trap of uh, not reading the question alongside the text, which may be, may, means that they may be not exploring enough of the text to be able to find the answer. And they may be distracted by the multiple choice option. Perhaps they're spotting a word in the question and then trying to spot it in the, in the text when the meaning may be different. So again, we look at the lesson plans available to you, which can encourage you to do your students to do more reading and thinking about how uh, what they already know can help them understand the text. So it's reading strategies um, to help them be successful. And then we have uh, an example here. Um, uh, this problem of students rushing in and looking at the questions and trying to choose the answer. Uh, again, the famous post-it note, cover up the answers, get them to read the text and just the question, can they find the answer to that question without the options um, and then look at the options. So it, it, again, it's, it's a strategy that they can start using as well if, if you're encouraging them to think differently about the way they're reading. And again, we recommend there is a reading for each part. There's an activity for this part um, in part five. And there are also other lesson plans for the other parts, which we haven't had time to mention. The reason it's useful is that you can use them also to encourage student independence. And you will find that there are some lesson plans for self-access like this one, which you can give to your students to help them develop their strategy, it helps them look at what they need to do and reminder of a strategy for exam tips. So again, we recommend you have a look at those. So that's a kind of quick look there. Now, uh, the other thing that we'd like to mention is the updated information for candidates, um, PDFs, which are downloadable. Again, available for both levels, but this, I've just chosen this one because we're looking at reading and you can see on the next slide how uh, the, what kind of information it provides. So there are lots of common questions, you know, uh, what do I do if I don't understand the text? And there are some answers to help with that plus some do's and don'ts to help the student approach this paper. And they're really practical and very helpful. So again, downloadable uh, from the website. We'll let you have the links. Thank you, Sarah. There are so many ideas in those, uh, I mean, two uh, components of the exam, reading and use of English. And uh, I think the, great, the lesson plans will be a great asset for us teachers. Now we're going to talk about the writing paper. Uh, the writing paper has uh, task alignment as well uh, between the two exams. Uh, we can see uh, some differences. For example, B2 first four schools is a bit shorter, but in the two papers, uh, you have to uh, write an essay as a compulsory task for part one. So we have an essay for B2 first four schools. We have an essay for C1 advanced. And uh, we're going to see some uh, differences between the, those two tasks, right? Well, in both uh, papers, you have two parts, one compulsory task, and then the second part has options of text that uh, the candidate can choose 
uh, to write. So there are other text genres that they need to, to have practiced so that they can make better choices for part two uh, in this paper, right? So we're going to look at uh, part one for, for those two papers. So as, we, as I mentioned, we have task alignment here. They both have uh, an essay for part one. In B2 first for schools, uh, they have the essay and they also have the option to add one more idea of their own uh, in the topic of the, uh, they can add to the topic of the essay. Whereas in C1 advanced, they have some bullet points and they have to choose uh, uh, two of the bullet points uh, in the uh, list of ideas there to write about. Uh, of course, because of the levels, we can see that there are differences in the number of work that the learners have to produce in each paper. And we also have a slight difference in the length as well of the uh, uh, part one, 40 minutes for B2 first for schools, 45 minutes for uh, uh, C1 advanced, right? So here we can see images of the tasks in the two exams. We can see on the left, uh, B2 first for schools, as I said, the learner has to include to add another idea to the list of ideas in the topic. And um, we are going to talk about how we can best help learners to prepare for those tasks, right? So some of the ideas can be applicable to either B2 or C1. So we're going to start by looking at, for example, expressions that we use when we write an essay. Well, we have to deal with a number of language functions when we are, uh, writing the essay. For example, we have to agree or disagree, give opinions, give examples. We need to compare and contrast ideas. We also need to draw conclusions. So one idea uh, to help learners is to give them a list of expressions. And then they, you give them also a table with some categories. So the purpose is for the learner to start organizing the expressions under each of the headings here in the categories. And later they can start creating sentences and then starting putting paragraphs together using those uh, expressions. This idea comes from one of our lesson plans which you can download from the website. And when we're talking about um, uh, writing an essay, it's very important that in the classroom, we help the learners to generate ideas before they get down to writing. So here is an idea that I'm going to share with you. Uh, C1 advanced, but you can also adapt it for B2 first for schools as well. We're going to start this discussion uh, on uh, using technology in class. So a combination of technology and education. So uh, first we could start by uh, surveying the students, getting them to work in pairs and find out about the benefits or dangers to society in terms of uh, technology. So they can decide, uh, they can talk about things like artificial intelligence, social media, online learning, which everyone <laughs> uh, is involved at the moment. Uh, and then after we do this uh, initial conversation, we can give the learners the topic of an essay, and then uh, we can help them put the topic together by choosing one of the points we discussed previously. So they insert it in the title, and then they can start, they can start considering uh, uh, other ideas about the topic. So for example, how uh, social media has influenced society, what are the benefits, the drawbacks, the ways to improve it, et cetera, et cetera. So helping the students to generate a lot of ideas before we ask them to simply write a text uh, in the code without warming them up for this activity, right? So it's very important that we use the power process, right, Sarah? So Absolutely. <laughs> this is a very nice acronym that Sarah and I really like uh, uh, sharing with teachers. When we say the power process, we are talking about P for prepare. So getting the students to do the research, narrow down the topic, brainstorm ideas, organize uh, so they choose their best ideas, write a plan or outline of the, the essay, uh, think about paragraphing as well, and then they write the answer. So once they have written the answer, it's a moment for them to check carefully for errors and necessary repetition, and they can also edit their work. And then finally, R for review and reflect when the learners practice for the exam, and then they have someone else check their work 
and think about what they can improve on next time, right? So this is the power process we like talking about, right, Sarah? So in order to help us teachers with um, assessing learners' writing, um, we have now uh, developed some uh, writing guides, uh, assessment of writing guides, which are available from the website. They are brand new. They are great resources and they are full, full of ideas for both teaching and assess writing. So here is an example of uh, the, the points and the criteria we need to consider when we assess writing. So we can see the four uh, subscales here, content, communicative achievement, organization and language. And then we can see a description of what each of those points are and what each of those points are not. So uh, it's very important that we look at content, for example, and decide content is about this, but it's not about that. So this is one of the things, the uh, criteria uh, and the, those uh, guides for assessing writing help us with. So uh, in terms of organization, for example, it's very important that at B2 level, learners understand that they shouldn't be writing individual sentences, but also but they need to master uh, paragraphing skills. So how to join ideas together, put them in paragraphs. In the case of C1 advanced, understanding specific te text genre uh, for the exam. For example, one of the things you have in C1 advanced that you don't have uh, in the uh, um, uh, B2 is, for example, if you're writing a report or a proposal, you need to know how this is structured and all those things you need to give feedback on and prepare learners for, for the task, giving them uh, the skills and the, the tips. So in terms of the criteria, one of the things you can find in those guides is um, sample texts uh, from learners. So you can see those sample answers. And also you can find detailed descriptions of the wording in the um, rubrics for uh, assessing writing. Here is an example of the rubric for communicative achievement in B2 first for schools. You will see the criteria and the, the, the descriptors on the left. You have uh, definitions of what they mean and you have a sample answer with examiner's comments. It's the same, for example, for C1 advanced where we have descriptors for organization. We have a description of what they mean and a sample answer with examiner's comments you can even use those sample answers to work with the learners and for them to spot why this or that area actually needs to, it's working on, needs improving, right? So here are the, the guides that we are talking about. They are um, available and they are downloadable from our um, website. We highly recommend uh, looking at them because they bring lots of uh, ideas. As I said, not only for assessing, but also for teaching writing. One other point about uh, B2 First for Schools is that for part two in B2 First for Schools only, one of the options the candidate has is to write about a set text. So uh, set texts are recommended by Cambridge and the set text but for this year and next year is Rebecca uh, by Daphne du Maurier. And uh, this um, set text is an option, right? It's not a compulsory task, but it's, it's for B2 first for schools only. So Sarah, anything else you would like to add? Yes, to no, I, no, I'd just like to say about the guides, that there's, they are fantastic. And it's also interesting because they look at teacher assessment, self-assessment and peer assessment, and also how you can um, obviously encourage your students to become more confident in understanding the, the criteria. So yeah, absolutely, I agree with you. They're, they're wonderful, yeah. wonderful. And suggestions for online teaching as well, right? Yes, that's true as well. So mm -hmm. online and offline and uh, yes, so yes, super. One of yeah. my favorite resources at the moment. Um, looking at listening, um, some of the things that we've said about reading are equally important when we talk about listening. So for example, making sure that the students know how much they themselves bring to the listening. 
uh, is an important thing. But let's just have a look at the structure first. Um, we can see that uh, like the other papers, there is commonality um, between the B2 and the C1 in fact, in fact, very similar because they have four parts and they have similar tasks. What's different is that they're slightly for, uh, longer text at C1 because obviously the speed of delivery also changes so with the level of challenge so you will see, uh, see um, that the texts are slightly longer at C1. You can download the audio files um, to accompany the, the teacher's handbooks that we talked about at the beginning so again if you want to use those materials they are free to download as well. We talked about students understanding the, the paper. And again, um, this is a slightly different uh, var variation of getting the students to be thinking about what's involved in each paper. There's a student A has some questions and student B has some questions, or let's say group A and group B. They do their research and answer the questions. And then of course, they can exchange information with their partner or with another group. But it's a really important way to make sure they know what to expect um, in each part of the test. Now, preparing to listen includes uh, getting your students to do as much listening as possible, thanks to things like uh, Netflix and the and YouTube. Um, the, there are lots of um, opportunities for many people who have access to those. Um, but of course, we also in class need to be making sure that we're doing different kinds of listening. So maybe sometimes we're listening for gist, sometimes we're listening for more detail. And of course, the skills that are really important to develop in our students is that preparing to listen, predicting answers, using what they already know, thinking about the topic so that when they go into the listening, mentally they're much better prepared, pre prepared. And also using the question to help them do that. So if we look at this one, we can see um, that in uh, again in paper one, part one in both at both levels we have multiple choice uh, questions and they are um, actually in here's the B two example we have eight different situations and the students obviously have to look at each situation think about that situation and then listen out for the answers. We're looking at gist, we're looking at listening for detail, we're looking at function, opinion and purpose in both levels. And you can see that the C1 um, paper has uh, just three extracts, but two tasks per extract. Now, of course, we need to develop those skills again, perhaps looking at the context without the answers, thinking about the kinds of things that they might hear so they get used to predicting expectation, what might they hear and will really help them um, be able to approach the listening more confidently. So if we look at um, uh, this lesson plan here, again, just to, rem to remind you that what really are lots of lesson plans for each level, uh, this can be used um, uh, uh, with it as a teacher, but it also can be used for self-study, in including recommending that the kind of things that students should be doing about listening on their own. So uh, again, I think those strategies are very important to develop um, preparation. Now, as I said, for part one, we're listening for opinions. So students need, again, not just word spot, but they need to start listening around the word, perhaps as a paraphrase. Um, and for example, here, we can see um, the expressions from the dialogue on the left, and they match with what the expression actually means in practice. And you can see that these are actually about expressing an opinion. Very useful task and again, creates awareness of what they might be listening for rather than trying to do word spotting. And in the second part of the paper, uh, we have a, a gap fill, if you like, and they have to complete uh, the text. Uh, obviously, they need to be able to look at the grammatical, uh, look at the structure of the text and make sure that the words they're fitting into the gaps also make sense in the tense of the, of the, of the um, actual text. But before we even get there, I think it's very important that, again, we think about the preparation for listening. And so you might decide to do something like this. So we're going to be listening about puffin. So A, do they know what a puffin looks like? So uh, that might be quite useful. And then what do they already know about uh, puffins? Let's activate their um, uh, prior knowledge so that they can start anticipating something that what they might hear. Uh, you can do that very simply by asking them to uh, th um, think of three things that they know about puffins. 
and three things that maybe they would like to know. Then away from the exam task, just listen to the text and see if they can find out any answers to those, th those th uh, um, three questions or were the three facts in the text. Then we can go to the exam task. So we've already kind of warmed up to the topic. Um, and of course, now we need to fill in those gaps. So we need to make sure that we look before the gap and after the gap. Uh, and of course, then we would listen and try um, to try and predict the answer and then listen to the, to the text again. But again, we've already done some warming up in that prior task. Uh, and again, it's the principle, which is important. Now, the um, information for candidates, again, has some really useful tips on do's and don'ts for students for the listening paper. So again, recommend you have a look at that. And I think that brings us on to the next skill. Yes, thank you, Sarah. Oh, lots of good ideas, you know, you just feel like going to the lesson plans and digging into all those wonderful resources um, that are available. So speaking of uh, um, the speaking paper, again, we can see that uh, those two papers, they have uh, lots of uh, alignment, lots of similarities. So they both have four parts. Each, I mean, this paper is worth 20% of the total of uh, uh, the, the score in the exam. Um, they have a slight, slight difference in terms of uh, length. So 14 minutes for B2 plus four schools, 15 minutes for uh, C1 advanced. And the sequence of the, the tasks are also very similar as we can see uh, from this table here. So for part one, uh, the candidates will be uh, having this conversation with the, the examiner, the interlocutor asking them questions. For part two, they have an individual long term and then there is a slight difference there. So in B2 first four schools, they have two images that they need to compare and contrast. And for part two in C1 advance, they have two images. They have to choose two images out of three that are given to them. Part three, it's a two-way conversation where they need to talk together and come to a conclusion or a decision or a consensus. Uh, it's important that they look at all the visual prompts before they come up with a decision. And part four, in the two cases, it's a discussion which follows up from, follows on from part three in uh, each of the exams. So here is an example of part two for B2 and part two for C1. You can see B2, two images for each candidate and part uh, uh, C1 advanced, they choose two images out of three. It's very important to highlight that the images uh, in the exam are colored images. Those are black and white images because they come from our uh, handbooks for teachers, which you can download, right? But one of the things, uh, isn't it true, Sarah, that we can find today is images. We can yes. find images in many places on the internet. We can take photographs and bring our images to the classroom as well. So there are images everywhere. And a recommended site is unsplash.com um, because obviously they're copyright free. So uh, you're allowed to use those. So definitely recommend unsplash.com. Absolutely. So uh, we have here some ideas to help you prepare your learners for part two. Uh, we have an example here for B2 first for schools, but it can also be used with C1 advanced, which is uh, asking the learners to do this individual long term on their own using a mobile device. So what students can do is they can uh, uh, use an image or take, take a photograph, and then they can find time to um, uh, look at the photograph, start describing it, and then they can make a recording of this uh, uh, image and they can share it uh, with a friend or they can share it with the teacher so they can get feedback uh, on their description, right? So we have here uh, one example that, that students can do using mobile devices, especially now that um, many students are uh, studying remotely and then they can send it to their teacher. So learners can, uh, for example, choose a pair of images in this case, we have two images which are about people trying to win a sporting event. And then they uh, talk about what is similar, what is different. And it's very important that they time themselves while they're doing it. So they set the timer, 
they start the recording, they speak about the photos, and then they record themselves speaking, and then they can record themselves again, and then they save their favorite recording. And this is a very interesting uh, strategy nowadays that we have access to those devices because um, students, even without knowing, as they record and record themselves again, they are uh, using the language, they are repeating the language, they might be improving their pronunciation or their choice of vocabulary, etc. So there's loads that they can do with a mobile device and a set of images, which is so easy to find. So once they have submitted this recording, they can use uh, a number of questions to uh, either for peer assessment purposes or self-assessment purposes. For example, were you able to speak for a minute? or were you speaking for too long or for a very short time? Did you pause or repeat yourself? How easy or difficult was it to speak for one minute? And if you want to have access to uh, those tasks and those uh, questions, you can download the lesson plans from our uh, website, right? Yeah, and just to add, way. just so yeah. sorry, but so just to mention, if uh, you also want to use an app, uh, voicespice.com uh, is easy to use for audio recording. So if you if you have got students who haven't got a mobile device and you can use an online um, program, something like voicespice.com uh, works yeah. very well. Yeah, uh, very nice, Sarah. Uh, another idea, we were talking about structuring writing skills at the beginning, and then uh, students would need to structure what they're going to say if they are describing images, for example. So again, a similar idea to the one we talked about, we have a number of expressions, and then we give students the opportunity to categorize those expressions into three uh, uh, sections, organizing their response, describing photos, comparing photos, and then again, they are given a set of uh, images, then they can start describing the images using those expressions. They can do it in pairs, they can construct this little by little until they feel they are ready to uh, record themselves and uh, um, you know, use as much language as possible in a way that the description makes sense and it's well organized and well sequenced. So this is one idea that you can use with learners, right? Another thing, again, going back to what we discussed uh, before with writing is uh, helping the students to generate ideas if we want them to, uh, uh, to do well in a task where they will be talking to each other, negotiating ideas, trying to come to a decision together. So here is an example for you to prepare learners to speak. This is good for C1 Advanced because they can go through a number of questions and lots of ideas before they start practicing with the exam task for part three, where they have this uh, uh, two-way conversation, right? So here we have a number of questions which are related to education and technology. Because we're all living in this reality nowadays, it's, uh, students will uh, easily familiarize and uh, uh, will easily empathize with the, the situation, with the theme. So we have a number of questions, students can talk about them and then we can get share ideas, get the answers, etc. And then one suggestion is, for example, using videos uh, related to the topic. One suggestion that we bring to you is this TED talk about uh, a virtual lab which will revolutionize science class. It's all about virtual reality. So it's a very interesting uh, video to watch. So students watch the video and then they read the questions uh, first and then uh, uh, talk about the questions, watch the video. And here uh, we have a set of questions that they can use to answer while they are watching the videos. Then they can do the uh, pair check. Then we can get the answers. And um, now together with the students, we are going to construct the, the task for, uh, which is very similar to the exam task. So for example, they can, after going through all the stages, they can complete this mind map with five benefits that virtual reality can have for education using the ideas discussed in class. So they add their uh, ideas to this mind map, and then we can use the mind map for them to start having this conversation in pairs or in small groups 
and then practicing for part three. And the idea is that they come to a conclusion or to a decision together, but making sure that they talk about all the five uh, uh, topics before they decide on anything, right? So this is one idea to share. So as I mentioned, we are going to go back to SMART goals because you know, after all this time, we had so much to, to cover, right, Sarah? We had to kind of uh, make decisions along the way, uh, preparing a lot, then chopping <laughs> a lot of the materials as well. But we, we have been giving you the paths for you to access all those resources. So it's important that you set goals with your learners and that the goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. And in order to also help learners set goals, this is an idea uh, that you can use with the learners is a simple grid, give them uh, this, or you can do it using uh, um, your uh, virtual room or a whiteboard. So get the students to consider after you've given them feedback on their tasks, get them to consider what they need to work on so then they can make their own decisions. For example, I need to work on building my vocabulary, then get them to, uh, to set uh, themselves a task. So what is it that they're going to do to address this? They're going to start a word list, for example. And what is the time frame for them to do that? It's very important to negotiate deadlines with learners, set deadlines, negotiate deadlines so that they can uh, um, keep on task and uh, develop the skills they need to develop and you can uh, agree together on those goals, right? We have so many resources to share with you, right, Sarah? It's not enough, we have sample tests. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Sample tests with of all the parts of the of the exam, uh, and again, you can download the audio files to go with them. You can also, uh, if you're thinking about doing the computer based version of the test, you can also try out the computer based versions um, again through the website. Yeah. And just because I saw a question in the Q and A, someone was concerned that they thought that the B two first standard version, so not the version for, for schools, is going to disappear. That's not the case. You can choose between B two first for schools, obviously recommended for school age students, um, but uh, you can also choose the standard B two first, which have similar tasks. Just the context is slightly for first for schools is slightly aimed at the a younger age group. That's all but you can choose whichever you want and it's not going to disappear. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that um, uh, we can share with you as well is when we say, for example, the exam is B2 first for schools or C1 advanced, those CFR levels, uh, they encompass a big, a big number of competencies and skills. So um, Cambridge has organized the uh, I mean, a summary of those can-do statements to each of the exams. And you can find those can-do summaries in the handbooks for teachers. So this is an example of the can-do summary for B2 First for Schools. Uh, you can download the handbooks for teachers, right, Sarah? Absolutely. And more, as you can see on the, on the, on the, on the slide. Posters yeah. as well. What, what about the posters? Um, well, those posters... Um, I think, I don't know, I, I cannot judge which one is my favorite resource, but I love those posters. Those posters for B2 uh, First for Schools, they were designed uh, with a theme in mind. So each poster has a specific topic and you can, uh, together with the posters, you can download those um, uh, class activities booklets where you can find ideas for you to use the posters with the learners, both face-to-face -face classes or in an online environment. So you have tips. And uh, because of the level, a lot of the language you will find in the posters for B2 is phrasal verbs. So you have the phrasal verbs, you have the definitions and examples, and you also have ideas that you can use in class to practice language. One of them is the categories game where you can have cards with number of words. So learners can put words in different categories you can use the cards as well to ask the learners to uh, consider how many words can you think for X, Y, Z, and then they can try and find which words that, uh, you have on your card. Uh, also, you can have the option to get them to write sentences to practice uh, those uh, words in context. 
So lots of ideas you can find there as well as lesson plans. Sarah, can you remind us about the lesson plan? Yes, uh, when you go to my your my new English classroom, this is the website, you'll go into a section where you can find the lesson plans there and you've got self-access study materials to give to work with the students to encourage independence and you've also got lesson plans for yourselves as teachers. You can see they're available at different levels. But we still have more. We have the, the platforms to help learners practice writing with Write and Improve. This platform uh, helps learners to develop writing skills because they can uh, choose tasks in the platform, then they can write their answers to those tasks, and then the platform will immediately give them feedback on their writing skills, and they have the opportunity to edit their work and resubmit uh, a version and get more feedback on the, the second version, third version, etc., uh, of their uh, task, right? You have the option to uh, practice writing with exam tasks and tasks which are not uh, specifically exam related, but they are just writing tasks, but not necessarily similar to the uh, uh, exam, right? We also have the platform Speak and Improve, which learners can use uh, to practice speaking with a mobile phone or a computer, and then they can start talking to the lovely robot Sandy, who will listen to them, ask them questions, and give feedback on their writing skills as well. It's a great way to practice English. Sandy is, is lovely, everyone loves her. <laughs> And of course, uh, if there are also the, the webinars that have previously taken place and you can catch up on the one that Alberta did on A2 and B1 preliminary to schools if you missed that. And of course, there's a whole range of other uh, webinars which are, you will find here. And you will also find uh, examples of the speaking tests uh, with candidates which you can also use from the Cambridge English TV YouTube channel. Yeah. Wonderful Cambridge English TV. Well, each of our exams will have uh, a preparation page section. So if you choose the exam on our website, you, you have the tab called preparation, or you can uh, go to this link and click on one of those rectangles here. This will give you access to a number of resources like the sample test that we have mentioned, the links to English practice activities, the, also you can download the information for candidates which uh, Sarah mentioned here, they have been uh, um, redesigned with lots of tips for learners, question and answers, do's and don'ts, etc. Also you find out information and you can access our games and our social media channels and find out more about the official Cambridge English preparation materials from Cambridge University Press in case uh, you want to have more uh, resources uh, to use with your learners, right? And we also have the uh, guides for yep. assessment for the assessment of writing, which we have mentioned uh, uh, a lot, and we are really uh, enthusiastic uh, about them, aren't we, Sarah? Yes. <laughs> And of course, this is the uh, your new classroom that I mentioned, which is where you'll find those lesson plans and much more. So lots to explore there and lots of free resources to, to, to download. And one to mention specifically is the teacher support pack, um, which is an interactive PDF, and it will allow you to click directly to the resources from this page. So we've chosen the older learner resources for B2 and C1, but you get them for the other resources as well. I think we've got quite time for like a couple of questions and then we'll, I think we'll have to stop. Yes, <laughs> okay. I can see uh, some, some questions here, um, uh, Sarah, um, about how do you assess speaking and writing? I mean, how do you give the points in each of these areas? I think we have mentioned the, the guides for assessing writing. We don't have the guides for assessing speaking yet, but there's a lot of information about uh, um, assessing speaking skills in the handbooks for teachers, which you can download from the site. But please go to the writing guides and you will find a lot of information about how to better assess uh, writing skills. Right? And for speaking, go to the YouTube channel and you'll be able to see the sample um, tests with, with candidates. And there are also comments on their performance that you'll find there. Absolutely. Okay. Um, 
I would like to have uh, uh, teacher handbooks. Where can I download them, Sarah? Where can I download the handbooks? Well, uh, absolutely. You showed the page, but I think you will also find that you'll be, you're going to be given links in the follow-up to this webinar where you'll be able to find them directly. But yes, if you go to our website, go, there are various ways to access the resources, as you can see, um, but you will find them to, to download from my new classroom that I said at the beginning. Yeah. Well, Sarah, I, I would love to answer all those questions, but we have run out of time. We would like to thank everyone who has uh, taken their time to attend this webinar, to share their thoughts, send their comments and questions. And thank you very much indeed for giving up your time to be with us. We hope we've given you a few resources to help you uh, with your journey and with your, your students' learning. And thank you. We hope you'll join us for another webinar another time. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for being with me in this webinar. And thank again. you, Alberto. It's been great. <laughs> and and just amazing that we're in two different hemispheres. So I've really enjoyed yeah. that. So thank you very much. Thank you. It was lovely working with you. Thank you. Bye-bye to everyone. Bye-bye.